Hey, what's up? This is Disciple Marshall Occurrence. This is part seven on um, a national leader, mysterious and not understood. So what I was touching on in the community is the worst, worst thing I think is the community in America. You know, I don't know about nobody else, nobody else, but here in this country, I feel that uh, gang banging, however you want to put it, shooters, thugs, it don't got to necessarily be a person in the gang, but that's more, that's most likely what the case is. You know, uh, people that um, from different ethnicities, all shooting around and killing and killing kids. Um, to me, that um, is at the top of my list as the worst thing that's in this country. And unfortunately, it's not esteemed that way. I'm going to say that again. Unfortunately, it's not esteemed that way. And that's the problem that we have in America. Yeah, it ain't nobody. It ain't no outcry against that, but it's an outcry against pedophiles. But it's no outcry against the person that takes the life of someone that didn't even grow up, that didn't even get to experience nothing. There's no outcry. Let's keep it 100 here. There's no outcry. It's one thing to be upset. It's one thing to have an outcry. And if there, and in my opinion, if there's no outcry about um, kids being killed by uh, gangs and and, and, and and street life in the street life, people in the street life killing kids. Uh, if there's no outcry about that, you shouldn't even. It shouldn't be no outcry about no pedophilia. Period. That's backwards. That's backwards. I don't, people can say, well, you know, it's no, it's no, 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 no. It comes down to, in this case, the technicality. It comes down to the technicality, which is the child has no life, no more. It's nothing that can top that. It's no, you can't split heads. You can't come. It's nothing you can say. That's worse than that to me. It's not. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's nothing you can show me, because it's tech. It's. It's. You can say by principle. You can say by technicality. I mean, you can say by principle too. Or, uh, yeah. You can say by principle that it's just a. It's. It's a kid being killed, man. Nobody want to hear nothing about anything else. Period, and yet in the um, black community, particularly, this is not even. There's no outcry. People may be upset. People may feel what they feel, but there's no outcry though. There's nobody saying anything worthwhile. You know when black people mad. Come on, let's keep it 100. If you're from the hood. You know when black people are upset, okay? It's no denying that. It's no denying that. It's no misinterpretation for when kid, when people are upset, black people particularly. It's no, it's no denying that. So you can't fool me and say, well, we do talk on, you know, we do feel, nah. There's no angriness and anger and true anger that comes from when kids are killed in gangbang. There's no outrage in the streets. There's no outrage from your, your black entertainers, the black act actresses, the black actors, the black rappers, the black singers, 
There's no outrage. You know when people are angry? Besides being black, you know when people are angry. So who are people fooling? When they say, well, we know what's going on and we feel, nah, that's not enough. Especially considering what it is. That's not enough of a of a of, of a of a um a reaction to people that are truly concerned. It's not. And you can't blame anybody. You can't say I'm twisting it because it's too bulky of a um and too simple of an issue. It's a kid being shot, period. There's nothing else behind it. So you can't say well, these people are being biased or these people are just using or looking for an excuse. Nah. Looking for an excuse to harass black people. Looking for, won't smoke with black people for no, nah. Because it's, it, if you see how sensitive this subject is, anyone could be upset about it. That's simple. You can't even question someone that is talking about it. You look like the idiot. Question someone, questioning someone's motives about it. Why are they talking about it? You feel me? That's, that's, that's making you look bizarre. Because if you really had respect for kids of the world, you, you wouldn't even question anyone's motives for bringing that up. Period. From your enemies, from whoever. You wouldn't have any... You would you you would put them out the picture and answer the questions and, and talk prop and and, and 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 address it for what it is. Because there's no way you can sell me that. You couldn't sell that to a fat man. You couldn't sell if it was a piece of cheesecake, you couldn't sell that cheesecake to a fat man. You couldn't. Because we have seen when the black community is angry. They tear up buildings. They riot. They burn houses. Properties. How come they haven't burned the property of these people that gang banged against their kids? How come they haven't come and violated the houses of the people that killed the kids? This is anger now. We're talking about real anger now. We're talking about not caring at this point. And you know how it can be in the hood anyway. It just once one people one side go in, the other side go in. How come y'all never went in for the, this consistent trend of kids being killed? I don't want to say trend culture because this has been practiced too much that now it's become culture. That's why nobody's saying nothing. You know. The, the truth of it all is it's it's become culture and that's why nobody's saying nothing people have gotten so used to this practice this 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 act and this culture in America is that because and nobody's re nobody is responding anymore this is the reason okay um but it's still not valid man not when you're outraged about one thing, you're not outraged about this. It could be anybody. Let me say that. I wouldn't care who it, it could be Cambodians. If Cambodians were here in this country shooting kids, anybody with any kind of heart looking at these stories, Eventually you're gonna say something, man. Eventually you're gonna it's gonna you're gonna outcry. And that's why I don't buy this fake hero, heroic type of energy that these street guys have, particularly like they protecting children. I see these guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody been no catch the kid, touch the kids. These guys, what? But you're not saying nothing. You're not outraging about the people that's doing that are to, that are killing the kids. You're not saying nothing about that. And to me, that comes back to fear. That's what it comes back to: fear of rejection from your own people, and fear in general, fear in the people that's doing it. That's the real reason why nobody. The, the, sometimes the 
people are not caught. This is why, out of fear and rejection. But if you haven't evolved enough to re or, or, or understood the difference between the street life and killing kids, then, you, then you're, a, you're a lame person, period, to me. Because I know the difference between thug life and killing kids. I know the difference between straight up killers and people that's out here banging on kids and, and missing their mark and shooting kids. I know the difference. And see, the black community say, well, let, look, in this country, you can never say let our issues be our issues. I got people around me for no reason. You know what I'm saying? I got people around my life for no reason. And you're actually doing stuff. You think you're going to be able to tell America to not get involved? You can't be serious. You think you're going to be able to say people on the outside don't have the right to tell you anything? And y'all and kids are being killed right here in the same country? Nah, bro. You ain't never had it like that. Don't lie to yourself. You have never had it in America where you had exclusive issues as black people that no one was a part of or knew nothing about or didn't speak on or didn't act against. And I mean, that's from that's and I mean, people accept things from the white man more than they accept things from people, other people, man. I'm just being real. And the first thing they want to label you is a sellout. I think the sellout is the person that it don't know the difference. If you don't know the difference between gang banging, thug life, and killing kids, then you shouldn't be doing none of it. I mean, that's self-explanatory. If you can't differentiate between taking the life of children and thugging and selling rocks, if you can't differentiate the difference between that and killing a kid, then you should be you shouldn't even be doing it. And, and that self explains it for itself. That's that explains that uh, uh, it, uh, that is the answer also. Basically, these people that can't understand the difference between gang banging and, and, and kids being killed, you shouldn't be gang banging, and everything will be all right because you don't understand the difference between hitting your mark. A person that may have killed somebody in your family or someone that one of your homies and you feel like you want to get revenge I'm not I'm not the person to uh, as a Christian to condone that but I do uh, understand the reason why those things happen you know what I'm saying that could have been a you know one of your homies that just got robbed by some 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 just some loser and, and, and shot him up you know what I'm saying? It wasn't even a tit for tat game banging situation. It was somebody that robbed one of your homies and you want to get revenge. That's totally different from somebody out here shooting kids. How do kids get in the mix of that? I mean, without them being involved or anything. No kids involved in, in whatsoever, any form or fashion. Obviously not, because this is crack selling. This is shooting. This is game banging. It's literally for the adults now, because you got divisions of underage game bangers, you know. But um, top kids, babies getting shot? Nah, bruh. They have nothing to do with that, and yet in the black community, I have I am I have not seen any outrage. No outrage, and I we all know when black people mad. Come on, man! Like I said, we know when black people mad. So why are you not mad? That's what I'm saying. You, you that scared? You that scared? You that loyal? When people are killing each your kids, you that loyal? 
I'm not loyal to anybody like that. I'm keeping a hundred. I mean, these days we all know even family don't even get along. Even family don't make it all the way to the end of this race we call life. Even your family might not make it to where all of them love you and you got them all, all the people you started out with, you got them in your journey. That might not even happen, let alone complete strangers. So if your family might make it out of your inner circle, they not in your inner circle. How are you going to just be with people, complete strangers? That's not your blood. I don't care if they, what they look like. I don't care what they look like. They not your blood. They are not your blood. But you treat your blood like you that is it, like it's conditional. We hear it all the time on TV, on 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 social media. People cutting off their family. So you don't cut off the black people when they do things wrong. I don't understand that. That's the only way things are going to change is if we separate from the the, the problem. And then you will have like-minded people that did also separate it. And then there you, you build from there. That's what we needed to do. If people had the courage to separate, sooner or later they're going to find their way to social media and, the, and, and build their own culture per se. And they're going to, and people are going to gravitate towards that people. That's just not with innocent gang, kids being killed. This is the biggest issue in the country. What is bigger than this? It, if we get a vaccine, if we get vaccine, everybody get vaccinated and COVID goes away, right? You still got this going on. And this matters to a lot of people. This could be you. This could be your family. This could be your kids. And that's the problem. That's the whole problem. People don't care until it hits home. Then everybody want to go out screaming at the sun. Then you want to howl at the moon. You know what I'm saying? All in the same day. But when it's your people down the block, you closing your door. You act like you don't know. And so you understand, man. I lived it. Let me help you people understand. Because I heard a couple people. I don't know if it's my look or whatever, my intelligence. I heard a dude that don't even know me, didn't even hear me talk, talking about calling me a white boy. I'm like, and even if I was, it's white boys from the hood. That's lived in the hood. But I grew up selling crack. I, I sold crack at 16. I'm not saying I sold weight or nothing like that. But I was a teenager selling crack cocaine. I had a gun. I, I broke in a house before. I've been robbed twice. And when I was a kid, I was, I could have been a victim of gun violence. I was walking, I was coming down the stairs in the apartment that I stayed in, coming downstairs to play. I heard a whole bunch of gunshots go off. Man, our next door neighbor got shot down. And this is me by myself, just doing what I do as a kid. You know what I'm saying? So don't get it twisted like you you think you don't know where I come from, man. I could have been that kid. That you now you see why I probably feel this way? You see why I might I probably feel this way? Because if I would have came down five minutes later, and I couldn't have been no more than eight years old, nine, I wasn't twelve. I was less than twelve. I think I was about eight or nine, early nine, eight, late eight, early nine, something like that. I was little though, because I remember my mind, how I was going down to play. And then I was going down the stairs and I just started hearing a whole bunch of gunshots. I didn't even need to see what was going on. It was so many good, I knew what it was. Even as a kid, I knew what that was. And I went, I remember I went back upstairs. This is how I know it really got to me because I remember everything that was going on. My mom was in the house. She was watching the Oprah Winfrey show. <laughs> this let you, this is how you know it was the 90s. 
I told her that I had heard gunshots. I'm I'm sure that's how it happened. But what, however the case, I'm sure she was probably was she was watching Oprah Winfrey. I think I'm sure. I think so. But I did. I went in the house and I told her what happened. And um, and 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 that always stuck with me, man. And actually, and, and one our next door neighbor, right, right there, like right across the hall. Before I went down the stairs, his door is right in front of ours. So I had to go past his door, the person that got shot, going down the stairs. That's how close this person was to our house that got shot. You know what I'm saying? So that's just so you people know and understand. This isn't somebody that's sitting back behind some computer or behind some um, some some uh, phone out of touch with reality like some space age kid that didn't, didn't, didn't grow up nowhere near the hood at all. You know what I'm saying? For somebody that went through that much, you know, a little taste of that, selling crack, cutting it up, you know what I'm saying? Do I am I saying I'm the the biggest dope dealer in the world? Obviously not. I wouldn't be talking to you on the phone right now. <laughs> to be real, probably not. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no. It's only one greatest dope dealer in the world. Anyway, there's not many of them, in my opinion. We all can say we're real once you come to a place of sincerity. In a place that would you would do certain things in certain situations, you're officially real. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. That's why. That's how I feel the way I feel. I know what it make. I know what it means to be real. I know what it takes to be real. You know what I'm saying? It don't take selling a whole kilo, five thousand kilos, to be real. It doesn't take shooting five and ten, twenty people. And, and to be honest with you, a lot of these dope dealers ain't got no bodies. None of them. None of them ain't shot at nobody. They ain't got no bodies. Uh, they ain't been around no killers. But they sold dope. That was how they got money. What I always say is the dope man want to be the killer and the killer want to be the dope man. <laughs> That's how it is. That's what I see. They all, they both want to be each other. But you rarely find two people that hit that sweet spot that the killer and the dope dealer what I've seen, you know, one, they gravitate, one gravitates, the street guy gravitates to, to one direction or the other, depending on a whole bunch of things, the people he grew up with, the people he around, family, those things play a big role, whether he becomes the dope dealer or the shooter, you know what I'm saying, but you rarely find people that uh, hit that sweet spot. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you usually have a guy that start hanging around killers or you start hanging around people to get money. You know what I'm saying? And everybody that's a killer don't get money all the time. That's what people tell you that. Killers will tell you. you. If you had friends that's been killers, you know they don't all get money at all the time. But that's all dope dealers is thinking about is money. You know what I'm saying? So, so a lot of people don't understand the difference between that and I do. You know what I'm saying? But I have sold a little dope. You know, I have done some crimes in real time. You know, I took a car straight off the car. You know, I've done some things. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is, you know, the bottom line is, is, um, are you real? You know what I'm saying? And, and to be real to me is, is honest. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you, if you hide in your honesty, you know, if you hide in your honesty, then you not real to me. And there's no way you can look at this stuff that's going on and be like you real. I mean, like be like you, you don't have a problem with it. I don't understand how people like, that's not being real to the game to me, man. That to me, the way to change that is to confront it. You know what I'm saying? Take that out the game. If that's how the game is, take have a problem with it and take it out the game. That's the but see, we don't have leaders in the communities of America. We don't have leaders. You know what I'm saying? Because you can be real and be like, have a problem with that. You could you you could be 
goon of goons. You could be a straight up thug with 50 bodies under your belt and have a problem, an issue with that, man. That's what I'm saying. That doesn't take away from your realness. That, to me, that suckers to think talking about this takes away from your realness. How? When that could be your kid. I'm not feeling that, man. That's what I'm saying. So for people, for black people to be as outspoken as they are, but to not be outraged means, I don't know what it means. I know it doesn't mean, they not cut from, the, they not like the old school. The old school wouldn't have allowed it. Now it was the biggest dope dealers there was in, it, there is anyway, up to date. The old school wouldn't have allowed that. The killers in the past wouldn't have allowed that, man. Right, I'm coming back for uh, part eight on national leaders. Because this all is national leader. This is what national leaders should be covering. These, this is the things that Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. would have been talking about. Although you may not agree with me. These are the things they would have been talking about, man. What else is there? To, what else is the biggest problems in the community that will t really touch your heart? Touch your soul. What is? What else is there? You know what I mean? That's real. So I'm gonna come back for part eight.